What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv, video all this stuff, and in this video I'm checking out this, it's Sony's FE 85mm f1.8 lens for video use. Now in many ways I feel like this lens is kind of overshadowed by Sony's gigantic G Master version, and I think there's potentially a hidden gem with this version. So for your viewing pleasure today I'm going to be checking out how good it looks, what kind of build quality you get, what kind of value, and just generally whether it's any good. Let's do it. So I now have a Patreon for this channel. It's completely non-profit, the idea being that any funds from Patreon, I put back into the channel, I buy equipment, review it, do a totally unbiased review, and then I give the gear away to backers. It's really inexpensive to be a backer, and it allows me to do gear giveaways. In fact, so far, it hasn't been running that long, but I've given away stuff to the value of hundreds. However, unfortunately, I cannot give this version away because this is actually on loan from a buddy of mine and he, I imagine, would be pretty angry if I gave it away. So, what is it? Well, this is Sony's budget short telephoto 85mm prime lens for full frame E-mount cameras and most lens manufacturers seem to do one of these to sit along their big, full fat, heavy and usually expensive f1.4 versions. Here's Canon's old 85mm f1.8 and as you can see, they are a similar size and the thing with these lenses is they tend to have apertures of f1.8 as standard, so basically two thirds smaller than the f1.4 equivalent. With that two thirds of an aperture difference in mind, we see a monumental reduction in size, weight at only 371 grams, and of course, cost. And I know these are things that a lot of video guys appreciate. But rather than comparing this lens to the G Master version, I want to focus on is this lens a good lens in its own right? Because I just think the price points are way too different and it's just kind of not really fair. It's, it's, they're in different leagues in terms of price. Clearly Sony are catering for two completely different markets here and obviously my conclusion would be if you have the cash, the G Master is amazing. If you don't, this 1.8 version is great. Here's something that absolutely floored me when I found out. So we all consider f1.8 to be a large maximum aperture, right? Well, when I buy a lens, I like to consider also the T-stop, the light transmission. And amazingly, the T-stop for this lens is T1.8. And that never happens. To have an f-stop and T-stop the same value, I don't think I've ever seen that before. And that's amazing. So of course this lens is going to be great in low light and with that longer focal length it should give some really lovely out of focus areas and subject separation. If you've never used an 85mm lens it gives you a 29 degree viewing angle if you can imagine that. It has 9 elements in 8 groups with 1 extra low dispersion element which for a low budget lens like this is quite surprising because that's quite a special thing to have. The extra low dispersion element prevents lens aberrations and increases contrast. So it is a relatively simple design and it has nine rounded aperture blades, which I love. It just means you're gonna get lovely smooth looking out of focus areas even when stopped down. This lens also has Sony's double linear autofocus system, which is really nice because it's the same system they use in the 50 millimeter F1.2 G Master Beast. So that's lovely to have. To me, focusing with this still has that very, you know, focused by wire feel, which manual focus guys will probably not like that much, but it should work really well with any of the newer alpha cameras. The last feature to mention is the focus hold button on the side of the lens, which is customizable and lots of Sony lenses have. I personally haven't yet found any kind of use for this that really revolutionizes my workflow, but I'm curious, How? Uh, let me know, do you have some sort of amazing use for this? Let me know in the comments, that would be appreciated. Moving on to build quality, and for this kind of lens, the non-flagship prime, you tend to get a lot of plastic, and that's partly for weight reasons, also for lower manufacturing costs. And with this lens, it does feel a touch on the plasticky side, but Overall, not bad at all. It's actually quite solid, and it's it's certainly not plasticky to the degree of, say, the original Canon Nifty 50. So overall, pretty good. It still feels like a really good bit of kit, and I'd expect nothing less from Sony. Just know that you're not getting G Master or Canon RF L lens kind of build, nor should you for this kind of price. It does have the weather sealing gasket around the mount, so it's considered dust and moisture resistant. 
but you still gotta be careful. Sony actually say, hold on, shoot with confidence in light rain or windy conditions. Oh, hang on, come in. Hub, can I just check? You're not gonna use that outside, are you? It's a bit windy. Oh, this is, you can shoot with confidence in windy conditions, so it's fine, right? Next onto the user experience, and I would say it feels pretty good. The focus ring is really nice and smooth, not that I ever use it, and the focus motor noise is, well, it's completely silent. I cannot hear it, even though Sony say that you might be able to. And that's a really good thing for shooting with, you know, a microphone on top of your camera if you wanted to do this. It's less likely being a telephoto, but that's good news. And just to add to the discussion of autofocus, I've found my experience with using this and the autofocus in video has been excellent. I mean, accurate, fast, silent, it's just excellent. So I found it really just a joy to use and due to its compact size and weight, it's just, it's felt like a very slick experience. And I find myself just kind of comparing the experience of using it to some of my favorite lenses, like the Sigma 50 millimeter F1.4 and 135, this one, Beast F1.8. And yeah, I, I just, I think it's, it's been great. And the footage that I've had, I think easily sits beside these fancier lenses, no problem. Next, I wanna show you how it looks in real world tests. And of course, I wanna to touch on uh, the aesthetic, the detail, the any kind of chromatic aberration, any lens breathing, let's do it. So starting with focus breathing, and this, if you're not aware, is the amount that your field of view changes when you go from closest focus to infinity. And it has to be said, this is pretty terrible. And of course, this should be expected on a lens like this, which is designed for photography and not for videography. But yeah, this is about as bad as it ever gets. Next onto detail, and I really don't wanna spend long on this. I've stopped down just a little bit to get the lens to its sharper area within the aperture range. Here it is at 350% zoom, still sharp. Needless to say, you really don't need to worry about detail when buying a lens of this type. I'm gonna talk more about this in just a moment. Looking at the out of focus areas or bouquet, you can see it's pretty glorious. And of course you'll be able to see more of that from my test footage. And as I stop down, you can see it stays pretty smooth looking. This of course is because of the nine rounded aperture blades and I really appreciate this. Next, I wanted to test for chromatic aberration, AKA purple or green fringing. It's one of those frustrating things that you can't really get rid of like you can with photography in Lightroom. Punching into 350% and you can see there's definitely some fringing going on. It's an extreme crop, so chances are you won't notice it that much. And like I said, there's not really much you can do. So looking at the original frame, would you notice this? Anyway, next it's time for just some real world footage, roll it. I know in that last section, I didn't really want to get into the detail side of things too much because I believe that as videographers, we don't need to worry about sharpness from modern lenses. It's just not an issue anymore. I think on the whole, uh, most lenses are sort of sharper than we need them to be. But interestingly, when it comes to detail, this little 85 millimeter lens outperforms the G Master version and the Zeiss Bartis, which I thought was, Interesting. Moving on to value for money, and obviously this is a good value lens, but I think it's important to think about value in context. So let's get that context now, and we'll talk about value after I've done my pros and cons. So let's check out the alternatives now and see whether this little 85 millimeter lens is the one to buy, or whether there's some intriguing 
other options out there. So starting off with the G Master lens, which I said I would mention but not include in this as an alternative because the price is crazy. I'm not being funny. That is not a good value lens. Let's just get that straight. So the actual first proper alternative would be something like the Sigma Art 1.4. I love this range of lenses. They don't cost that much more and the quality is stunning. I love them. Then there's the new Sigma DG DN Contemporary line. These are really new. They're meant to be very good. I don't think they're quite as good value as they could be, but they look intriguing. Next we have Samyang Rockinon Bauer, which is said to be very good and they're always competitively priced. Next the Zeiss Bartis f1.8, again another lovely lens, but given that this is an f1.8 and it performs fairly similarly to this Sony version, I'm not sure I could recommend this. Yes, it will outdo it in terms of build quality, but results, I'd say they're going to be similar. An unfamiliar lens to me is the Tokina ATX M f1.8. This looks like a bargain. I don't know if any of you have seen this one. Like I said, it's new to me, possibly one to look out for. Another lens that's unfamiliar to me is the Viltrox f1.8. Another potential bargain, these Viltrox lenses are really gaining in popularity. And can you believe that Tamron don't make an 85 millimeter lens for E-mount? I couldn't believe it. Anyway, now it's time for my pros and cons and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So starting with the pros and obviously value, this is a great value lens, come on. The size and weight really makes this a pleasure to use. You can throw it on a gimbal and get some really unique shots. It doesn't take up much room in your bag, it doesn't weigh the bag down much, just throw it in for every shoot you do. I was pretty blown away by the image quality in general. Like I said, it outperforms the G Master and Zeiss Bartis in terms of detail. Generally, this lens completely outperforms its price in terms of the image quality. If you get this lens, you're gonna be pretty chuffed with the results. Lastly, that's silent fast and accurate focusing is a joy. This lens has taken a few of the really high-end elements from the much more expensive G Master range and that focus motor is one of them and it's great. On to the cons and there's a little bit of focus breathing. It's often the case with these kind of lenses which primarily are designed for photography and not for videography. Luckily Sony are looking to compensate for this by adding the breathing compensation function which is fantastic. So chances are if you're watching this in the future and you're thinking of buying this lens you've probably Probably got one of those newer Sony cameras which has breathing compensation. The focus by wire system works really well for autofocus. It will be a con for some, there are some people that still don't like it. I would say the construction could be better, but probably not for the price, so not really a con. I did notice a little bit of vignette wide open, but I've never felt like this has been a huge problem for me. I quite like vignette, so a con for some, subjectively, not a con for me. Finally, to my opinion, and no surprise, it's a good bit of kit that I've really enjoyed using. What I like the most, and the reason I think that this should be on most Sony video shooters' radars, is the combination of the small size and weight, the large max aperture, and the really quite low price. Let's not get bogged down by seeing this as being in the shadow of the much more expensive G Master version. To use a car analogy, it's all I could think of. It's like comparing the Porsche Cayman to the 911. Both incredibly fast, get it? One a little bit faster than the other. One significantly more expensive than the other, but does one do a better job of getting you where you need to go in a fun way than the other? Sort of? Not really. I would say if you ever need to demonstrate what diminishing returns means to someone, Show them side-by-side -side photos taken by the G Master and this 1.8 version and tell them the prices. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that this lens is on loan from a friend and the really telling thing is whether I would buy a copy for myself once it's been returned and um, I think I would. I think I will. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this video interesting and helpful. I want to hear from you in the comments. Do you own this lens? Any regrets? How do you use it to shoot video? Any kind of pearls of wisdom, please don't hesitate, pop them in the comments section below. After all, this channel has always been about learning and sharing. I've now made hundreds of videos about audio and videography, of which YouTube has picked this video for you, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.